Greetings, fellow freedom lovers, and welcome to The Night Watchman, a libertarian podcast which brings you libertarianism and liberty-minded ideas from a minarchist and classical liberal perspective. I'm your host, Wes Tanner, and this is episode number one. What the fuck is minarchy? Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in. Welcome to the show. This is a podcast about liberty. It's as simple as that. Uh, We're going to be talking about ideas and how our philosophy and different ways of thinking can be applied to the problems we face as a country. The Night Watchman will mostly be short, easily digestible episodes that will cover news, philosophy, ideology, specific policy, and whatever else uh, helps further the libertarian agenda to take over the world and leave you the fuck alone. We will be deconstructing articles, commenting on culture. We're going to try and interview fellow libertarians and do our best to keep things lighthearted throughout. So the first item on the agenda for this episode is what the fuck is minarchy? Minarchy is a particular sect of libertarian philosophy that advocates not for the state to be abolished, but rather for it to be reduced to its most basic of functions. So basically, minarchists believe in just enough government to protect our rights. So exactly how small would the government need to be in order to fit that description? Well, let me put it this way. Minarchists want government to be the equivalent of a woman's A cup. Or, from the other perspective, ladies, when you pull your partner's pants down for the first time, you would take a look and say, that'll work. Just enough to do some good things, but not enough to do serious damage. So this typically confines the role of government to police, courts, and military. However, there are some libertarians who say that due to the evolution of society, there is some room for more government responsibility. Generally speaking, this is what tends to set minarchists apart from their more hardcore anarchist brothers and sisters. And it's not the only thing, but if you spend any amount of time on libertarian Facebook pages, groups, or forums, you will immediately see that the greatest source of infighting among libertarians is uh, between the ANCAPs and pretty much everyone else. And I don't say that to put any blame on them whatsoever. ANCAPs have a very pure and consistent way of looking at things that uh, is actually pretty vital to ensuring that any advances in liberty aren't made by compromising our core values. However, it is my view that there is a big difference between what's ideal and what's realistically achievable. To be honest, when I first discovered libertarianism, I was all about the anarcho-capitalist utopian worldview. I proudly championed the phrase, taxation is theft, and immersed myself in all of the philosophy and think-tanky ideas that described how a stateless nation would operate. And even though I've moved away from complete anarchy, A lot of those ideas have stuck with me. I still believe that taxation is theft, however, with the caveat being in reference to the income tax only. But we'll save that topic for another time. There's a classic joke between all libertarians that we've heard, and it goes like this. What's the difference between a minarchist and an anarchist? About six months. Well, I actually went in reverse of that. And uh, it's not that anarcho-capitalism doesn't make sense to me. Philosophically speaking, if we are to follow the concept of liberty to its most consistent point, it leads and, dare I say, requires an absence of authority. I am a minarchist simply because I believe in a pragmatic application of the principles of liberty. Uh, See, I still believe in America, and while the state doesn't give us our rights, the USA has provided a framework in the form of our Constitution that supports our liberties. Well... At least it's supposed to. So if you're wondering whether or not this show will be yet another showcase debate between which is better, anarchy or minarchy, then no, we're not going to go there. There are plenty of very well-spoken people in the liberty movement already that have covered that topic to death. And frankly, I have no desire to spark that kind of division any further. I see it like this. As libertarians, small L, big L, whatever the hell you are, we all pretty much have the following principle in common. People should be allowed to do what they want as long as they don't harm anyone or take their stuff. But 
To what conclusion in which you want to follow that principle is entirely up to you and fine by me. Moving on. Minarchy is often referred to as the night watchman state, hence the title of our show. And in a minarchic... Minarchic? Yeah, I guess. Okay, we're going to run with it. Minarchic state, what you would see is government taking on a bare minimum role that is tasked with protecting our rights and liberties from those who may seek to violate them. This would involve a strong national defense in the form of our military, a court system, and a police force. But when you expand that definition, it could also include things like fire departments and any other social or emergency services as well. To me, this is not only what seems achievable, but practical. And while, as it is the nature of government to grow and liberty to shrink, a night watchman state, given the proper safeguards, could offer the best compromise between those who value individual liberty and those who are attached to Big Brother. When I was first learning about libertarianism, I got into a ton of arguments and debates online with both friends and strangers alike. Go into any semi-public political forum and say taxation is theft and see what happens. You know what happens. I did it primarily to flex my newfound freedom biceps, but also because I felt excited at finding a new way of thinking about things. But as difficult as it is to understand at times, the very concept of freedom is just something that the majority of people aren't on board with. They can't see past any form of privatization without equating it to evil capitalist oppression and an uncertainty. Uh, people want to feel secure, safe, and provided for at times. And we've had many generations of that kind of dependence to the point that when any ideas that suggest less are put on the table, they are often met with outright hostility. And that's one of the reasons why I think minarchy is a decent concept. It's an easier sell than anarchy. I mean, I'll call it what it is. It's minimal statism. And that word makes me fucking uncomfortable, but I'll be intellectually honest about it. Uh, but overall, I think it is a better message to people who are recovering from a full-blown reliance on government. <laughs> and, and I'm not suggesting that we pull a bait and switch or anything like, hey, I know we talked about minimal government, but now that we've achieved that, fuck it and fuck you too. We got what we wanted. Uh, I actually do believe in the validity of minarchy as a concept and to a certain extent classical liberal views, which if you aren't familiar with that, it's basically the same as minarchy but allows for a basic social safety net. So I'm sure there's more I could say about all this at this time, but a lot of it is uh, very contextual depending on the discussion. Um, my beliefs in minimal statism will come out bit by bit as we get into future episodes and start talking about things that actually matter. Because while learning about libertarianism can be fun and very intellectually stimulating, um, I really actually wanted to spend more time on this show applying those thoughts and ideas to actual real world as it is now situations. I'm not going to ignore those who want to learn, but rather I would prefer to point them in the direction of the already established thinkers in our movement. So as I wrap up this segment, I'll uh, touch on a few of the big names that you can uh, research on your own and read about as they pertain to minarchism, anarchism, libertarianism, classical liberalism, and other isms. Um, so here they are. For an even better explanation of what minarchy is and the logical reasoning behind it, make sure to check out Austin Peterson's article at his website, The Libertarian Republic. Or you can just search for him on YouTube as there is a video in which he explains why he isn't an anarchist. And as a quick side note, Austin's uh, article and episode that he did for his podcast about minarchy is the reason why I'm a minarchist. So instead of me just sitting here repeating all of his words, I'm just going to send you right to him. For those of you who want to read up on uh, anarchy, the go-to source for most libertarians is the writings of Murray Rothbard. I haven't read much on him myself, but he is very highly regarded in the movement. Uh, so for general libertarianism, uh, that's really just kind of the umbrella term for all the different concepts and philosophies in the movement. In fact, little distinction is made between minarchist and anarcho-capitalist views if you just do a Google search on libertarianism. Uh, that rabbit hole is the reason I learned about anarcho-capitalism before discovering that there is a less radical approach in minarchism. To get a better understanding of classical liberalism, 
make sure to check out Dave Rubin on The Rubin Report, as that's what he considers himself to be, and he has a very great short video explaining why he is no longer a progressive and why classical liberalism is now considered a conservative ideology. And of course, there are several more, but that's where I would start if you're looking for some listening and reading material about the different shades of libertarianism. So that's about all I have for you guys today. The first episode of The Night Watchman is really just an introduction to the show and a little bit of what I will be bringing to discussions when we get into them later on. Expect there to be some format experimentation as I get the ball rolling and see what works and what doesn't. So if you can bear with me in the meantime, I would greatly appreciate it. With that being said, join us next episode where I'll be discussing how, as libertarians, we should accept advances in freedom wherever and whomever they come from. We're going to talk about Austin Peterson's Senate run as a Republican, Gary Johnson's contribution to attracting all sorts of new people to libertarianism, as well as touch on a lefty or two that happened to get some things right. Uh, we will also begin our segment on article deconstruction, as well as uh, introduce a little game that I'm going to be calling Libertarian Rant Roulette. So I hope you all give me a chance and continue listening from here on out. Thanks again, everyone. Till next time.